Hi all, today I'm going to do a quick lecture on pop art. Pop art you can find in page 132 in um, your workbook and in your textbook it starts on page uh, 444. Uh, pop art is was from 1960 to 1970. It was primarily an American uh, movement, although later England had a kind of a movement, but pop art in itself, what we're studying, was a reflection on the culture of the United States of uh, and uh, American people. And it was, um, the statement is, the idea is more important than the work of art itself. This is a good statement because it, it shows that the artists were reflecting what they were seeing and that was their priority more than creating art. And matter of fact, this at the same time, it also challenged us to explore what fine art was. Uh, I, you got to start with Andy Warhol, probably most well known with pop art. He uh, challenged us in multiple ways as far as uh, what was fine art and how we should uh, interact and think about art. He did this at one way in his production process. He used a silkscreen machine which any t-shirt that you have that has printing on it is silk screened. It's simply the application of a, a ink onto a shirt. It's cured, heated, and then um, it becomes durable and permanent. Um, but the thing about silk screening is you can mass produce the art. And this has always been something that is contrary to fine art, that uh, whether you could mass produce it, and that makes it where it seems like, well, that's a commercial endeavor. Uh, Warhol came from a advertising background and so he kind of overlapped the ideas of uh, fine art and consumerism at the same time he spent a lot of time exploring consumerism in his work which you can see in your uh, piece that you're reflecting on the Campbell soup can uh, another place where he really challenged his um, exploration of fine art he called his studio the factory so he embraced this idea of using processes that were mass producing and that uh, his um, creating work that seemed more like a product than it did this fine master creation that we would call fine art. Um, on page, well, let's stay with Warhol for a minute. So uh, Warhol on page uh, 446, you can see his piece that uh, you, you've probably seen before. It's Marilyn Diptych, uh, created in uh, 1962. Diptych simply means, and I think we've talked about this before, that two uh, works that were created to, to uh, hang side by side. So there are two separate paintings that are hung side by side, so it's a diptych. If there were three separate paintings, it would be called a triptych, and it can go up from there. So um, this piece is silkscreen. It's of Marilyn Monroe. And uh, and this is one of the areas that Warhol was really thinking a lot about, is how we turn our celebrities and our entertainers into products and how we consume these products. So he's thinking about us as consumerism, our relationship to our products, and what that looks like. So once again, I reference back to the Campbell Soup can that you're going to be looking at. He took this common product that's on everyone's shelf at the time, and he brought it forward and made it a subject matter and painted it um, and said, okay, so this is uh, an important thing that we should look at. Even though the, the art world's like, well, there's nothing interesting about that. That's very ubiquitous in everyone's life. And uh, so why should we consider that fine art? The answer being, I'm an artist. I created it. It's art. Therefore, it's art and it's fine art. Uh, so having us think. And that's where... Uh, once again, go back to that statement. The idea is more important than the work of art itself. Warhol lived that. Um, as far as turning our celebrities into products, today we might think of that as objectification, where we look at uh, someone and just think of them, not even think of them as a person, think of them as an object. And uh, Marilyn Monroe was a great example. At her time, she was probably one of the most famous, well-known uh, celebrities, actresses, singers of her time, but she also was one of the loneliest because she felt like no one really knew her. And this is what uh, Warhol was commenting on. Uh, I jumped down to the bottom page 447. 447 is uh, Roy Lichtenstein. Uh, so where Warhol was commenting on 
commercial products and consumerism and taking these iconic images that we, um, iconic products and turning them into images. Um, Lichtenstein did something very similar. He took a very recognizable um, image, something that everyone knew about, and that is the Sunday comic strip. And uh, back in the day, uh, papers were black and white, except for on Sunday, they would run comic strips and they would put them in color. It's more expensive to print the paper in color, and so, but people looked forward to the Sunday paper so they could see their comic strips in color. Lichtenstein took this iconic imagery out and put it on a canvas and made it into his art. Just like the soup, uh, Campbell's soup can onto the canvas, Lichtenstein took the comic strip image. And he took a, a character that you might see in a comic strip and he put uh, text on it and he did a different series of these uh, comic strips. So like I think this is The Drowning Girl, 1963. Hey, there's one of the characteristics of our period he it, is this style it's called the bende dot uh, if you remember impressionism they had pointillism so where the the paint didn't touch this is very similar but it's actually to uh, replicate that printing process that you found on newsprint and it's called bende dot um, the other thing and I'll step back on back on page 445 uh, Rosenquist, that's actually, uh, we talked about collaging with uh, Dada. Pop art also, the artists uh, used a lot of collaging. So you have two different, from Hamilton and Rosenquist, two images on page 445, where you can see the process, the technique of collaging. Collaging will take uh, pop culture, iconic images, and place them together. And a lot of times, this is where I come in with the juxtaposition, you place these different images side by side and then you get this third meaning. And um, it was highly used in pop art because they're commenting on things, they're making commentary, they're, they're using images that we recognize that we already have attached meaning to and they're placing them on a canvas to create a narrative, to create commentary on society and what they're seeing. And you can see two examples of that. Um, and then all the way to page, goes to page um, 449. Um, Wasselman has a couple uh, collages where he uh, took um, just common recognizable uh, products and uh, put them together to kind of represent what he was seeing in culture. Um, and uh, Klaus Oldenburg, artist during this time that uh, would take recognizable images and make sculptures of them. Predominant characteristics were uh, primary colors, the collaging, uh, bende dots, juxtaposition, and that they were exploring mass production of process for fine art. Just the only other thing I would say that a primary influence for uh, pop art was that, uh, so if you remember that uh, we had just come out of um, <coughs> in um, I'm going blank now here so um, oh we're talking about post impressions where were you talking about coming from uh, out of World War II so now we've had about uh, 18 years to get settled get past World War II and um, and what does society look like now and we have we were we put the war way past us we're ready to move on we're producing we're having families we're creating suburbs uh people are going back to school i mean like we're really thriving and the artists are pulling forward like look guys step back what's important to you now and they're saying maybe we've gone too far maybe we're living for consumable products too much maybe our priority is these uh, tv dinners and television and advertising and the slick side of life that we're forgetting to live, and that we're becoming these products as they're, the advertisers are putting forward to us. I uh, do a uh, exercise with my in-class group where I ask them to think about all the products around you and all the advertising that you're immersed in, and that, you know, why? Why are we doing that? And it's so funny because they, they don't see it. They're like, Scott, what's your problem? It's, you know, it's what it is. We need to know that information. Might as well have it on the packaging or on my hand soap or my 
milk carton or whatever I need to know, you know, how many ounces are in this and the calorie count and all the information, how it's processed. And I need to know that it's the dairy best. It's funny because we become, so our surrounding becomes us and therefore we don't see it. And the job of the artist is to point that out. And then if it's right or wrong for you, that's not, that's not the conversation. It's just be aware of it and see it and recognize it. And that's what artists do. So this week you have your, uh, now after you've been introduced to pop art, you can finish uh, quiz four. You got your art reflection and then a very simple uh, exercise that I put up, which is continue the conversation with Christo and John Cage. I enjoyed reading y'all's observations. I thought some were really pretty insightful. Others were very discounting, not really thinking about it. That's what we get. Uh, but hopefully I added a little bit to make you think a little bit more. And uh, I'll expect a comment back from that. So that's what we do. And then um, we've got three more weeks. And we're done. Three more weeks. So you guys hang in there. And I will see you online.